Welcome, this is Sports Zone on Joy Prime. I'm Fentio Tahir Fentio. Over the next 60 minutes, the Black Stars has a new coach. Chris Huting has signed, well, a two year contract, or more technically, a 21 month contract to be in charge of the Black Stars. The unveiling was done in Kumasi. We'll give you some highlights from that very packed event earlier this morning. Also, he returned to Accra later in the day to take charge of his first training session. Eight players were present for that particular training session. What is Chris Huting looking to bring to this Black Stars team? How does he intend to turn them from also runners to continental champions? He's been asked lots of questions, but we've got the highlights for you here on SportsZone. Also coming up, House of Folk, now within touch and distance of leaders, the Jenna Stars, as the race for the Ghana Premier League title heats up. We have action from La Liga, controversy galore as Real Madrid fall 12 points behind leaders Barcelona in the La Liga title chase. In England, well, Chelsea's troubles, well, are back, basically. Man United with another foot into trophy zone and Arsenal comfortably cruising at the top of the Premier League table. All of that to come, plus your messages. This show is live and interactive on social media. Uh, on Twitter, you can reach me using the hashtag SportsZone. So just use the hashtag SportsZone. We'll retweet and read your messages. On WhatsApp today, we're changing our number slightly. So do pay attention. We've got a new number. It's important to remind you. But the new number is as simple as the old one. This one is 551 57, 57, 57. It's really that simple. Send me a message. What are your expectations of Chris Hutton? What must he do to get you behind him? 0551 57, 57, 57. Send me a WhatsApp message. Today, I'll read a lot of messages. So do send me a message on WhatsApp and on Twitter. On Twitter, use the hashtag SportsZone. On WhatsApp, the number is on your screen. 0551 57, 57, 57. This is SportsZone. On Joy Prime, brought to you by Hunters. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. This is Sport Zone on Joy Prime. I'm Fenty Ota here, Fenty There was Formula One action as well. One of the most controversial weekends of Formula One. Uh, Sergio Perez taking the win in Saudi Arabia, but Alonso went through the emotions, really. First, he was on the podium, then he wasn't, and then he was. But I feel really bad, really, really bad for Mercedes. <laughs> Finished fourth, then got promoted to third position. And then they came and said, my friend, get out of there. <laughs> we are putting on the show back in there. Uh, but anyway, let me introduce my guests. As usual, the regulars are here. Sicho, my far right, and Daniel Cranston. Guys, good evening. Welcome to the show. Yeah, good evening. Yeah. Uh, a lot happened today, earlier this morning, yeah. uh, of course. Uh, and we'll get into it, Chris Hutchins unveiling. But it's time for me to tell you about Hunter's Real Apple Cider. Tell it's us. crisp. It's refreshing. Mm. And that's a perfect beverage for any occasion. It's made uh, from hand-picked apples. Okay? Hand-picked. Yeah. Pick it. From yeah. Using the hands. No, no artificial. No, 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 it's very, juiciest apples. Exactly. Thank yeah, you, man. Daniel. Uh, and it's crafted using traditional techniques. Mm. You understand? Traditional things. Yes. Hunter's real apple cider is bursting with natural apple flavors and a hint of sweetness oh i like it oh that's right oh i like it <laughs> uh, unlike other ciders hunter's real apple cider is made from 100 percent pure apple juice mm. with no added sugar or artificial flavors Raw, okay uh, whether you're looking for a chill refreshing drink on a honey sunny day uh, on a hot sunny day or a warming beverage during the colder months Hunter's Real Apple Cider is the perfect choice for you. Versatile. Okay? Mm. Enjoy it on its own or pair with your favorite meal mm. uh, for a delicious and satisfying experience. Okay, Experience the true taste of real apples in every sip with the real Hunter's uh, Apple Cider. I like okay? it. Hunter's Apple Cider has got real apples. Another quality product from Casa Preco. Okay? For bulk purchase, call us 0262-351-251. Okay, 0262 351 251. All right, that's it. So, apple real cider. Okay, real apple cider mm. from Casa Proco. Get yourself one and then feel free. Okay, let's get into it then, Daniel. This, uh, today, uh, there were quite a lot of story angles from Chris Hitchens unveiling, and we'll play some of them to you shortly. But for you, what stood out? He's the guy. <laughs> Yeah, he's the guy. You see, there was no ambiguity about that press conference. Right. He went straight to the point, answered the questions crisp. He doesn't leave any room for rumor mongering, interpretation. Any interpretation, assumptions. No. Yeah. He said it clear. And I loved how he answered the questions, honestly. I, and now, must also credit the, the journalists on the day. Brilliant questions. Um, you can tell they were very well researched questions and questions that were in the hearts of Ghanaians. They asked the questions. And credit to um, Henry and um, Chris Hutton, they answered those questions there. What stood out to me was when he was asked about his criteria for player selection mm -hmm. and then his style. Mm -hmm. When they asked him about criteria for player selection, he gave the best answer that I have heard a national team manager give. Mm -hmm. He says those criteria, they are subject to change. There's not a clear it cut It will not be static. It will not be stat static. There's not one way you go and select a team. It can change based on what the team needs. And that is brilliant. I think... So it's not necessarily because you played 10 games 10 and games scored 15 scored goals. goals. No. It's about what the team needs. What the team needs. And he decides what the team needs. Right. Not your stats. He decides what the team needs. He decides how the team is going to play. And he decides the players that will fit that system. Correct. So if you score 20 goals and 17 assists, it doesn't mean that you automatically walk into the team. He will decide. And that is a man who knows exactly what he wants. A man who is clearing the air for everybody to know. So that in the subsequent press conferences, you don't come and say, Coach, uh, this player has scored. <laughs> no, we don't want that. And when he spoke also about his style, very, also very important. Yeah. He went straight to the point. He says winning is the most important thing. He wants to win. His style is about winning. It's not about an identity. Mm -hmm. And that's something about modern day football that just gets me off. People are so fascinated about what is his identity? What is he doing? And in identity, they sort of lean towards offensive, nice, free-flowing, trans creation, tiki attacking, tiki-taka, nice football. <clears throat> nice football has never won a trophy. Yeah. Pragmatic football wins trophies. And winning football wins trophies. So whatever style you are going to use, so far as Just you are win. winning, 
That's what, that's what we want. And you see, results have a way of wiping everything out. Once you win, nobody really cares how you did it, what you are doing. Yeah. It's about winning. And once he can instill that winning culture back into this team, which is clearly his objective, I think he'll, he'll take this team to the next level. All right. Uh, you know, uh, let's just uh, touch base with Chris Hutton and Kumase. First, with that question about his style, when he was asked, will you be playing offensive football or defensive football or what style of football are you bringing to the Black Stars? And this is what Daniel was talking about. This is what Chris Hutton said. As regards to what type of team we will see, what we want to see, we want to see a winning team because there, there can be and there will be lots of questions on a style of football, players that play, why is this player not playing and why is this player playing, um, are you too defensive, are you too offensive, uh, ultimately what we all want to see is winning football and, um, and that starts with the correct preparation of the team, using the players to the best of their ability and picking a team that suits the type of players that, that we have. So I think we all, as coaches, start on the same level, the same starting point. And the starting point is to put together a group of players to play as a team and to win football matches. All right, really as simple as ABC Sutro. I mean, there's not really much more you can say to that. It was the perfect answer. Building a team, picking the right balance, getting them to win football matches. And that's basically what, what is required of him. Especially when you're a coach of the Black Stars. I mean, it depends. It depends on where you are. When you're the coach of Brazil, there's a clear expectation on style. On style. When you're the coach of Germany, there's a clear expectation on style. The coach of Italy, the coach of, um, if you like, Spain. And that is largely because of how they train their talents. Systematic. When, systematic. So there's, there's a plan towards how the country should play because of sometimes how physically they are built. If you're, if you're Spanish, we are not necessarily muscular, big in size. They like to use spaces and the ball. But when you're the coach of Ghana, where a lot of your players are developed in several parts of the world, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a simple question of how do we win games? And the thing is, when you're... When, when Daniel said that it's become a modern phenomenon where people question what's the style, how does he play, and all of that. For a club side, it makes sense mm -hmm. because you train with the players every morning, every evening, sure. the whole week. So you need to develop a style that you can even buy players into. Yeah. At a national team level, you don't sign players. Yeah. <laughs> you use the players that are Ghanaians who are available to you. So style is not a question here. How you win is the question. And the more reason why I think Chris can be successful because we've seen him at Newcastle, we've seen him at Bright, we've seen him at different places. And depending upon the strength that he had in those teams, he maximized it. The way he played with Newcastle in the championship, was they were very much on the front foot. But when he got Brighton in the Premier League, they were not as good as many other teams. So he was a bit defensive, and which wasn't bad for that. So I think he answered the questions. Well, he's a great communicator. He, yeah. he has a very good conversation with and, and as Danny mentioned there, I mean, massive credit to the, the journalists who were there. I think the, we've, all left, we've all left that press conference feeling like all the questions we wanted answers to were put across and the answers perhaps that settles nerves or calms hearts have also been delivered. So I think it was a great interaction between journalists and the coach. I agree with you 100%. And one of the most important responses he gave there was the very first question when he was asked about interference in player selection. Mm -hmm. And he says, I can't speak to what happened in the past. Right now, I am in charge and I will make my decisions. It's really as simple as that. I don't care about who influenced a decision in the past or all of that is gone. This is a new era, and I am the man in charge. Okay, uh, how about this? You, you mentioned it, Sichu, and I'll stick with you on that. He speaks about the importance of finding the right balance. Now, this is a squad that was the youngest at the 2022 FIFA World Cup. It's got an average age of about 25. It's got players that are 34, 35 years old, but it's also got players that are 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So Chris Tutin was asked that question at the press conference. How can you get the best out of this team? In my, in my time, I've been involved, and uh, I looked at this uh, very roughly this morning. There, there have been a lot of new players that have come into the squad. So if I think of the dynamics of the team and when I pick, pick the squad is to, to try to incorporate 
the best I can with the new players that have come into the squad and of course the existing squad members. I can only ever pick 25 players and I think most of you would know that um, you know, we have some injuries. So some players that have come into the squad that wasn't in the initial squad. Um, but it's that balance and what, what, what I didn't want to do was um, because what I can do is if I'm looking at the amount of talent that we have out there, you know, I potentially could have brought in, you know, another new three, four, five players that have not been involved in my period of time. But we have to have some consistency in the squad. And um, we spoke about going out of a World Cup in, in the last game, but this is, we have to remember, this is a team, this is a team that got to the World Cup when there were numerous very, very good teams, African teams, that didn't get there. So the starting position is good. Um, and I say, with the introduction of a lot of new players in my period of time here, I have to look for some type of consistency in the squad. I th consistency, that's the key word. Mm -hmm. He says it need to be consistent. And the question was about why his squad has got more than 70% of players from the World Cup. And he says it's important that we are consistent with our selection because that consistency is what builds the chemistry that ultimately could lead even to the beautiful football we want. Yeah, I think going to the World Cup, I would say I would, I would have agreed with about 95% of the players who were there by the time, some of our best players. And a and, and good thing for Ghana is post the World Cup, a lot of these players have gone on to their clubs and they've stepped it up. In, in, in the season, they've stepped it up. They've gone to the club, they've actually either maintained the level or stepped it up. So it was just right that he keeps that call together and build around them. And I was lucky enough to be around the Black Stars team in, during the World Cup. I actually was in the same hotel with them and had a great conversation with Chris one of the days when we were on the team bus to the training grounds. And we spoke about the team and, the, and how young they were. And he kept telling Jan Fanker and I that these guys have got real potential. But a lot of them are just rough diamonds that need to be fined and a lot of them need to just be polished yeah. and with time that is going to happen and i have a feeling that with his experience having been around the squad he's not new to this yeah. having been around the squad having learned the personalities in and around the team he could just be the right man to do that and so when he speak about speaks about consistency and then building from there i think we are just on the right path okay uh, three more things from that presser and then we move it on first one the length of the contract daniel uh a contract till December 2024. Uh, at first glance, it's a little weird because the timing isn't, there's nothing special yeah. about December, 20, you know, you know, December 31, 2024. It's not like it's the end of a tournament or it's not, it's not like it's the end of anything. And more crucially, it's just maybe some two weeks before the start of AFCON 2025, yeah. potentially. Um, but we understand that it's subject to review. Uh, it's a performance contract, so on December 31, they will review the contract. Uh, Chris Hutie himself says he thinks it's perfect. I don't know what you think. Um, I, I agree with Chris Hutie. Yes, you said the timing, the t and it's, it's, it's true. The timing is a bit odd because yeah. of when, when it ends. But I don't think that the GFA will wait until December 31 before making a decision. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that that decision, if they are going to uh, cut it or extend it, um, will be done months before because I like it because it's, it's, he gets to handle three blocks. So the first block is the AFCON qualifiers this time around for AFCON 2024 in Cote d'Ivoire. So he gets to handle that one. Then he gets to handle the main competition that is AFCON yeah. 2024. Then he gets to handle the entire qualification series to AFCON 2025. True. So that is three blocks and that is transitioning the team. So at least he has one full tournament experience yeah. with the team. And two then he has two series. qualifying series with the team, headed into the next competition. So I'm sure by the qualifying series to AFCON 2025, we will know whether we want him to stay or not. And then that decision will be made. So I don't think, I just think they needed to find a, 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 an end to it. Yeah. I feel like if the GFA extended it and made, let's say, February 2025, they may exactly. not have been sure what, this, what the stakes will be by then. But if you are qualifying for the competition and you've given a contract at least until the end of the qualification, maybe midway through the, the qualification, you can tell whether you want him or not and then you just extend it to the end of the, 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 the main competition. So I, I perfectly agree with the, with the length of contract. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, here's my second issue. He was asked critically 
about whether or not he would win the AFCON in 2024, AFCON 2023 in Cote d'Ivoire, um, which is about nine months from now. And he says, nobody can guarantee anything. So we've had some coaches that have come and they've told us, they've guaranteed us some style of football. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go there. Either. That's why they are gone. <laughs> That's why they are gone. <laughs> but, but, but. Um, some people say he's just trying to evade responsibility. But it's a reality. Who can really guarantee a victory like that? Right. When in your last two AFCONs, you were out on the, at the last 16. <coughs> yes. In the last AFCON, you were out at the group stage. Mm -hmm. In real sense, it doesn't make sense that you're going to tell yourself you're going to win it straight away in the next sure. one. Yep. You have to accept that you've not been good for a while. Sure. And Ghana qualified to the World Cup. Yeah, qualified to the World Cup, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of things. You're not playing all the best teams on the continent. You, there's a path. And Ghana qualified to the World Cup in a group that wasn't necessarily the most difficult group. We, might, we, we had to beat South Africa on the last day via penalty here in Ghana to go through that group on goals scored. Right? Yes, goal, goal scored, score. not points. Mm. Goal scored. Mm. Then we did not the, even goal difference. Yes, then we beat Nigeria on technicality reasons because it was that way oh, goal rule. So that is where we are. We went to the World Cup and then we were out at the group stage. I mean, we had three points after beating South Korea. So that is where we are as a country. So when a new manager steps in and he's been around the team for a while and he's monitored and studied everything, he's not going to come in there and do what some of our football politicians have done. Yep. Raised hopes when genuinely they need to ma tell people to manage their expectations. And that's what Chris has gone on to do. He's told everybody, you cannot predict, you cannot guarantee that the Black Stars are going to win. But I'm sure deep down in his heart, he's hoping that he's the one who breaks that jinx. Agreed. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about uh, on this crazy eating or veiling, and it's important because it's become a very um, contentious issue uh, in this country, in these sides. He says he will stay in Ghana and he will watch as much Ghana Premier League as possible. And then he would consider, when he sees quality in the Ghana Premier League, he would consider players in the league to join the Black Stars. He says it's essential that as a national team coach, you are concerned about the quality of the local league. Daniel, here you go. We've had issues before with Avram Grant. Who else? We've had issues with coaches not necessarily staying in Ghana and people we're always very livid every time that topic came up. He says he will spend a lot of time here. And more importantly, he says he will watch the local league and consider players. That was the only political answer he gave. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only answer well, I wish he that he would that, watch the answer league? it that way. That, no, you see. He says he will stay no, and watch No, he will stay and he will watch. Yes. But he knows. He knows. <laughs> that. He knows that the Ghana Premier League players are not Black Stars quality. He knows. He's not watched enough. No, he doesn't already need to watch know. enough. He doesn't need to watch enough. Fence, let's not do this. You there see? might be a diamond in the rough. <sighs> Danny, calm down. Okay. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Look at this. It is not his job to search for quality in the Ghana Premier League. Mm. There is no Look, the Ghana Premier League is at the lowest of lows. And it's the job of the football people to fix it at the root of the problem. Okay. Our football education in this country is non-existent. True. The sort of uh, the talents that we churn out are not world standard. True. Bas look, let me give you this typical example. We have the best, or we had the best player at under 20 level, who was a 17-year-old in Fata Issa mm -hmm. He played six months in the Ghana Premier League and was blowing everybody away. Absolutely. Yeah. Then he goes to Sporting Lisbon in Portugal, mm -hmm. and he sent back to the B team. And the coach Ruben Amaram says that he lacks certain basics, and he sent him back to go and learn. Do you understand what I'm That's saying? That's true. That means that the best talent, young talent that we've brought out as a nation, is not up to the standard. Basics, and you see, he didn't say he lacks uh, uh, certain skills. He didn't say he's not talented. He didn't say he's not talented. Yeah, okay. He lacks certain basics. Oh. If we don't fix our football education. In this country, at the grassroots, at the level, grassroots all the way level, to the top. From it's not and it's not just a football and ability. Theory, the syllabus they are Coaching. teaching, yeah, is from 1960. That's what they are still teaching today. <laughs> no, it's true. So we we glorify talent and we glorify ability on the ball, 
But when it comes to the intelligence of the player and the ability to understand modern day tricks and modern day patterns and modern day tactics, they are lacking. That is why when they go out there, they struggle. Look at Ifiri Banya this week. What in the second last week made his debut last this week? week how many minutes? Like, like two, like two, three yeah. minutes. He just came. And you see, he's playing for FC Zurich. This is probably like the best player in the Ghana, best Ghanaian player in the Ghana Premier League. The one who everybody was screaming should be starting at a World Cup. Yet when he goes to the Swiss, he can't, he can't, he can't. The Swiss League is not even top ten. You see, so that is a problem. My my thing is, we need to differentiate the jobs and the 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 roles of the national team manager. National team manager is to look for the best talent possible, and if you want him to stay in Ghana. This might be controversial, but it's F for factors. If you want him to stay in Ghana, he's rather on holiday. Because a chunk of our players are out there. So if Actually, he's sitting, all of them, basically. All of them. Yeah. So if he's sitting here and he's watching Ghana Premier League games, he's, he's, wasting on, his time. he's wasting his time. He's on holiday. If he goes out there and he's watching those guys, that's actually doing the job. Do you get what I'm saying? So look, until we fix it, I'm sorry, and it's, by, it's by no fault of the Ghana Premier League players. It's not their fault. The football people have failed us on the grassroots level at the roots level. So now it's just having an effect on, on your Chan team can't even beat Niger. Your I was just going to say Chan that. Your team is struggling. Your, 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 your best, your best team go out yeah. to Africa in their Hamid 6, 7, yeah. 6, yeah. 7. Well, they're, they're not on the level. It, it's a hard take. I don't know about you uh, at home, whether you agree with Daniel or whether you think the take is controversial. Um, no Ghanaian player in the Ghana Premier League deserves a place in the Black Stars team. And he's made this point brilliantly. The very best one that was recently part of the World Cup squad. He's moved to Switzerland, can't even get minutes in the Swiss League. He's been shunted to the Swiss B team who play in the third division in Switzerland. Our best player before he left was Hatao Isahaku. When he played in the Ghana Premier League, he was unplayable. Sicho knows him very well, commentated on games where he was involved. He was, play he was scoring for fun. He goes to Sporting Lisbon. Of course, it's the most remarkable contribution. He was at uh, the Emirates when he knocked out Arsenal. But uh, that's not the point. The point is he's not playing. You, you understand? <laughs> yeah, let me, let me, let me I mean, further, but Kwame Poku was scoring goals for fun yes, for Kotoko. Kotoko. It was lovely to watch, very powerful, but... Goes but, to Algeria, nothing. All right, yeah, so. uh, speaking of the Ghana Premier League, this weekend was quite, uh, it was quite good, especially for the two big teams, mm -hmm. Kotoko and Hartsafo. They both secured victory. And now House of Oak have moved within four points of leaders at Genoa. From their viewpoints, or they've made a mistake. But from the footage we see right here, it's not, it's not definite offside. It's not clear for us to call an offside. But it looked like Even one. Even the free kick was funny. <laughs> he just steps in front of the player and he goes down. But bottom line, though, it was a much-needed victory for House of Oak, who has struggled in the last 10 matches. Now they've moved within four points of a Genoa Stars. Jana lost this weekend, so did Accra Lions. So all of the teams in front of House of Oak struggling, actually dropping three points, allowing the Phobians to catch up. And suddenly, from nowhere, House of Oak are competing for the title again. Um, we'll show you highlights of that Kotoko game because it was a classic. Yeah, they fucked to the Thank you. youth resources. I agreed, I agreed. Here are the four results from the Ghana Premier League round of matches. Uh, match week 22, so confirmation of Kotoko's victory there. Tamale City 3 1 win against Dreams FC. <laughs> Midiama 2 0 win against Great Olympus. Olympus struggling. Hearts of Oak beating Kotoko Royals 1 0. Bechem United 3 1 win over Karela United. Ever since Harun had used to go over that club, they can't get victories. I'm not sure what's going on there. RTU got a lot of motivation from a certain Gavin Taylor, but he didn't result in victory. 0 0. Against Chelsea, Israel Treman, 3 0 win against Akralas. That was the most surprising result from this weekend. Uh, Legon City is also beating a general stars 2 0. That match was played earlier today. Kim Faisal drawing 0 0 with Gold Stars. Confirmation of the table 39 points for league leaders for general stars. Lions behind uh, by two points. Machine United behind by uh, four points. And uh, Hearts of Oak. Uh, you see them there, 35, 39. So, House of Oak behind uh, by just some four points. And then the bottom, Kotokuro Royals struggling. Tamale City, Kim Faisal, Karela, despite the heavy defeat, up and above the relegation zone. All right.
You're watching Sports Zone on Joy Prime. We'll take a very short break. When we come back, we have Ghanaian players abroad. I've got your messages, and then we can get into the uh, European leagues. And a lot happened this weekend uh, as well. So we'll be looking back on all of them here on the show. All right, welcome back. This is Sports Zone. Time to bring you Ghanaian players abroad. Before that, though, let me take some few messages. Uh, not few, a lot of messages that I have coming. The WhatsApp number 0551 57 57 57. Uh, and on Twitter, the hashtag is Sports Zone. Um, uh, Pepita on Twitter says The football syllabus being taught is not from 1960. Daniel Cranston, Kaff, and the GFI are currently rectifying that with a new crop of coaches. Um, especially, all right, interesting. Nia Dutti Thompson, he says, uh, greetings, and he says, at Salamatu, I am not Salamatu. Um, he says, buzzing about his new manager, Chris, and hopeful for good things ahead. So, Chelsea is still 10, hard struggling to win games, and my United keeps fighting on all fronts. Good times loading, uh, he says. This message is from Prince PZ, my good friend. He says, Chris Hitting is our man. He's not the if God permits will win uh, type of coach. You can hear tactics in all his answers. He ain't failing. We smell success. All right. Uh, Jibble, he says, I'm already enjoying the show for great analysis, dear. And no one sports zone. Uh, on WhatsApp, lots of your messages are here. Uh, let me begin uh, from uh, the ones that sent this uh, much earlier. Uh, this one says, uh, I'm, I'm Emmanuel watching from Obua. Say the Black Stars new coach should simply shun interference on the powers that be, and he will be good. You say, All right, more messages here. Um, Kramo at Spetting Pum uh, Akubam he says, Hi, senior man, you are number one when it comes to sports analysis. Thank you very much uh, for that message. Uh, this one says, Hi. I'm Duplex from Castle. You guys are really killing it. I hope Chelsea will make it to the top four. And he has a laughing emoji. Even you can't believe it. <laughs> uh, oh, Charlie. Uh, I say, oh, Charlie, they joy. You guys are looking good. Uh, and they say, hashtag uh, sports zone. Next time, <clears throat> do add your name and where you are sending the message from. I appreciate that a lot because it gives us the idea of where you guys are watching us from. Very, very important. Uh, more messages. This one says, uh, it's from Mutala Tanko. He says, Dear Salamatu, with my humble opinion, the case should take it easy uh, uh, this evening. Uh, on, uh, and he says, good evening to Official Sicho. Thank you very much. More messages. Um, if Chris, uh, they should leave him to work. Okay. He says, saying that they should give Chris Hilton a free hand to operate. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Felix from... As I was in the Eastern region says, he should do away with the fear and favor because that's the major problem every coach has been facing in the Black Stars. This is Felix. All right, Felix, thank you for your message. This message says, Chris is the man. He can't guarantee a trophy. Rex from Abelenque, he sent in that particular message. And this message says, Ghana needs a good coach by this time. Uh, Jidonu, Arizona from Aflao with that message. This one uh, says, my name is Abubakar Siddiq. Uh, from the Gambia. I'm enjoying the show. Thanks for being there for us. Uh, Bubakar, thank you very much uh, for tuning in. And we've always had viewers from Gambia all the mm -hmm. time. Yeah, it's, a, it's very special. And so shout out to everybody in Banjo and all around the Gambia for tuning in. Yeah, boy, Alex, watching live from Seshi, uh, uh, he says, please, I would like to know if the day is going to captain the team on Thursday. Now, who else is going to captain, captain the team? Ah, ah. Ah, but that's your captain. So, what, kind of, what kind of question is that? Oh, my goodness. I want to ask you a question. Have you changed the is captain? It, is changed the is captain. Chris Hutton the coach on Thursday or not? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, this one. <laughs> Capito. Capito will captain. <laughs> 19 minutes. Did he give you solid claps. <laughs> captain. You <laughs> even score. Angola. <laughs> Kubasi. <laughs> Go there. Obesa <laughs> Chapin out. Obese Capito. Nana Akusa from Santa Maria says, I think Chris Hutton will be perfect fit for the Black Stars. 
And this one uh, says, uh, I have a feeling that for once, the GFL have got it right with the appointment. We just need to support him to succeed. Nana Kofi Kwache at Pobi Man. And this one, uh, I'll read more messages later, don't worry. Um, this one says, I'm Candy from Commander Besiasi. Please, guys, Chris is the man for the job. But my problem is the FA leaders. They will not allow him to do his job to the best of his knowledge. And Tofik from Ketekrachi, he says, good evening to you all. Thanks. Chris Eating has been so far so good. I hope he will be left alone to work. So you can tell there's a, people are united in what they fear could go wrong, which is interference. So the GFA, please leave the man to do his work. And speaking of which, today he started training with eight players. Uh, open come with eight players. Um, and the rest of the players are expected to arrive tonight. Yeah. And then they will leave for Kumasi tomorrow. Then they'll have one training session on Tuesday, that's tomorrow, another training session on Wednesday, then the game on Thursday at 4 p.m. Uh, this is the cheapest gate fees I've ever seen in a, for a Black Stars game. 20 Ghana, 30 Ghana, 50 Ghana, and 70 Ghana. It's yeah. unbelievably cheap. Uh, but you can tell what they're trying to do there, you know, get the fans, because times are hard. On the back of every bad tournament, the Black Stars. I mean, in fact, the several first bad... game wasn't always been great. Yeah, attendance yeah. hasn't been great. So, yeah, yeah they need to find a way of getting people to come right. to the stadium. Uh, let's check out our touch screen for Karim. Last week, <laughs> Karim was <laughs> trending because he, he had a big fight with Daniel Kratze <laughs> <laughs> over the omission of Jordan Ayu. Let's see what you've put together for this weekend because this was the last weekend for Ghanaian players. Uh, who were chosen by Chris Hutting to put in one last shift before they flew down to Ghana. What have they been up to? Well, <laughs> this is the last weekend before the international break, obviously. Uh, so about four of the players here are selected. They didn't taste any minutes. And those are two goalkeepers in Wallach Court and Abdul Manaf Nuruddin. They didn't play any minutes. Then Tariq Lamte and come out so they didn't also test any minutes so if this weekend is anything to go by we'll say these are the winners we've had from the weekend Lawrence Atizigi he was in action for win um St. Gallen in their 1-0 defeat to Wintata he is unable to keep a clean sheet 90 minutes four saves one diving save one punch one high claim okay Okay, then we have Dennis Odoi. He was also in action for Circle uh, Club Burga in their 1-0 defeat to Coltridge. 90 minutes, 84 touches, 35 completed passes, 18 final third passes, then nine ball recoveries. Mm. Gideon Mensah, he faced um, <laughs> Alex Jiku. His Alex Jiku Strasbourg, they beat uh, Gideon Mensah's AJ Oxer in the French league, uh, France League 1, 19 minutes, 79 touches, 13 ball recoveries, 11 final third passes. Yes, I, I am particularly interested in that 13 ball recoveries. <laughs> yes. So Dana must see that. <laughs> ah, okay. One, but two, then, three, four. Uh -huh. Four <laughs> metrics for a uh, defender. One is yes. on defense. The three are all <laughs> offensive. Proceed. <laughs> <laughs> two over three successful pass. Oh, uh, Dream it's two, two apiece. That's what the catch is. They are universal. Oh, it's cool. I'm building a point. <laughs> Go on. Joseph Edu, 90 minutes for um, Celta Vigo in okay. their 3-1 win against Espanyol. 56 touches, 41 over 44 completed passes, 7 clearances, 4 recoveries. Alex Jiku, he beat his uh, Strasbourg beat Gideon Mensens, AJ Oxe. He played 90 minutes. 70 touches, 45 over 54 completed passes, 12 ball recoveries, and five interceptions. Yeah. Salis Abdul Samed, his side, Lons, they beat Angus 3 0 in the League One, 90 minutes, 40 over 41 passes completed, six ball recoveries, five over five accurate long balls, and one assist. His first in his professional career. Mm. Thomas Party, we don't need to talk about him. He's beautiful, at least. 90 minutes, 94 touches, 69 over 79 completed passes, 18 final third passes, 11 ball recoveries. Majid Ashmeru, his side, Andalik, they won 2 0 at OH Levin. 69 minutes, 67 touches, 42 over 46 completed passes, 
Five over five tackles won. That's impressive. Three over four successful dribbles. He was named man of the match. Yes, of course. Yeah. He 69. And Kamal Din Sulemana, impact sub. He played only 20 minutes, but what he did on the pitch was visible to see. 21 touches, 10 over 11 completed passes, okay. four out of five dribbles completed. He had a good cameo yes. role in that way. <laughs> in fact, space. In fact, and we'll get to space yeah. because yeah. <laughs> I've come here for space today. <laughs> Joseph, <laughs> Joseph Pencil, he was the only scorer from the players um, Hilton selected. Okay. 19 minutes, 52 touches, 21 completed passes, two chances created, one goal. How score. many goals has he now this season? 12 and 9 asses. That's a lot. Solid. Inaki Williams. Mm. 83 minutes for. <laughs> Daniel, what's up? Oh, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have 83 minutes, 48 touches. <laughs> All right, three chances created, <laughs> three ball well, recoveries. Probably. Let's move it on. <laughs> Okay, this is the team ultimately. Lawrence Artizigi in goal, <laughs> Joseph Edu, and Alex Diku at the centre back pairing. Then we have Denis Odoegi Diomensa the, as the two left by full backs. Then Sali Samed, Pati Ashmiri mid for then Kamal Gin Sulemana, Inaki Williams, and Joseph Pencil in attack. Okay, Daniel, what do you have to say? <laughs> so please have a question. Okay, what's your question? <laughs> Last week. Mm -hmm. Last week, yes, Jordan didn't score. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? <laughs> yes. Say he's a striker. He doesn't score goals. Yes. You were that judging. wasn't the reason he you was were... included last no, week. No, I wouldn't wait. Adam wait. Matrix. Last week, last week's uh, selection was performance was for the date. whole it was... season for the league. It's cool. So this far, okay, Karim, come mm -hmm. down. Inaki Williams mm -hmm. didn't score. Mm -hmm. He didn't score. I saw ball recoveries <laughs> as part of the, <laughs> the stats. When Inaki Williams does it, the praise. He created three when chances. Jordan, are you does it? They say he's guy. a defensive <laughs> foil. That's cool. Sorry, where are Jordan's stats? Oh, you don't have them. I have them, but come on, he's only man at the, uh, the eleven. How many minutes did he play over there? Jordan, yeah, about twenty. He right, came on as a sub. Yes. He came on as a sub. Come on, Dean Sulimana. Since he came to the Premier League, goals zero, assists zero. They said he brought energy <laughs> to the game in, in, the, in the Spurs game. That's what he brought. When he came, they saw energy. So he's in the squad. He gave minutes. life to a dead he, attack. He brought and life, a three, energy. Three draw against okay. Tottenham. No goal. Tottenham no is no mean it. My point is, you see, mm -hmm. football has moved past judging players per their conventional rules. <laughs> a good player now is a player who follows the coach's instruction. Mm -hmm. That is a good player. Let me quickly read Love Chris Hutton's answer for <laughs> Thomas Partey. Yeah. When people said, so Tom, where he does he play in Ghana? He said Thomas Partey's role is hugely important because of his value. Sometimes the value we see as coaches is not what is seen outside. We all appreciate him. Yes. The, you see, you may not know the job that is being given to him. Yeah. But he's doing the job they've asked him. That's why he'll continue to play. Okay. Jack Grealish, earlier this season, when Manchester City went to Wolves and won, he gave an assist that game. Yeah. The previous week, Tim Sherwood was berating him for holding the ball too much. In his post-match press uh, presser, he was talking to the Premier League guys in studio. Yeah. Huh? He told them that, interestingly, Tim, the same thing you are telling me to stop is what Pep, Pep asks me to do. Yeah. Huh. Pep wants me to hold on to the ball. Then he ball. has a tactical implication. Exactly. So you are sitting there and you feel like wingers are supposed to take on take defenders. Up, yeah. But Pep has asked him to hold the ball. That's why Grealish will play week in, week Absolutely. out. Absolutely. He plays ahead of but Foden. So he yeah. plays ahead of Foden. And everyone else. But when it comes to the others, he's rotating. But Grealish will continue to play. So he may, it may not be nice for you, but he's following instructions. So in the manager's uh, head... Jordan follows he's, instructions. Oh, follows instructions. <laughs> Daddy, instruction is that Jordan is not... And, 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 hold on, hold on. But what is the instruction to Jordan from your experience? What is the instruction to Jordan? Yes. I explained it. If you go... No, in team, the blast out, what, in the what do you team, think is his instruction? Give me one minute. It's in the national team, if you go back the last year... Yes. And you look at our goal scorers... Yes. Only three goals out of our last 27 goals have come from wingers. Mm -hmm. A chunk... Come through the middle. Go down the middle. Yes. Ghana doesn't attack through the wings. Yes. If you look at the defensive stats of our wingers, mm -hmm. the, our wingers and our fullbacks, they win the ball more than anybody else on the pitch. So the instruction is win the ball. The, no, it's all part of it. Yeah. Yes. No, I, I know. Yes. I know. So, so Jordan's role. So I'm Jordan's that, role in so the Black Stars. That's what I must. Uh, it's highly <laughs> defensive. Yes. Maintains balance, and it doesn't mean he can't be offensive. Because if you watch the South Korea game, mm. where we switched, that was the first time in a very long time we saw Ghana offensive. Yeah. 
He did the job, he didn't he? he created. Yes, he did. So the coaches know he has the but ability also, to contribute but we offensively. Also saw him. We but also, on the but game plan, Jordan, they asked him to do a job. We also saw Jordan against, against you know, uh, the same South Korea, two mm -hmm. more. He gave them away. Like, not against South Korea. That was against, against Portugal. Portugal. That's against, that's against Portugal. Portugal. No, I can no, count, it, look, it, we can count everybody's mistakes. So, but the point I'm making is, so right now you're saying that everybody, when they watch the Black Stars and they watch Jordan, they should forget about watching him trying to score. No. They should start watching him recovering the ball. You see, when you say they are better wingers than Jordan, what are the numbers of the other wingers who come when they play for Ghana? It's equally as poor offensively. Yeah. That's, that's my but point. Defensive, but defensively, defensive rate is actually you. better than DS. That, it, to be fair to the others, though, and this is not to, to, to charge Jordan in any way. They're not getting the opportunity exactly. as... Oh, but it's, it's not. It's not. Not because as much, as, not as, much as Jordan, though. Yes. No, I, I appreciate, not as good as Jordan. I appreciate, I appreciate, it's not Jordan's show. Jordan so, they they, they, they have a point. They can also say, we've not had the same opportunities as Jordan. So, so therefore, we can't be measured in no, the same... No, but it's not his fault. No, but, okay, you don't okay, expect okay, so, another, so this is the problem with Jordan. Okay. This is the problem with Jordan. And I think it's a similar problem with the party issue as well. Ghanaians throughout Jordan's career have wrongly profiled the player. Thank you. The perception we have about the kind of player Jordan should be has been wrongly programmed into our heads. We see him as a player who should be skillful and take on players. We you see him as a, a player. I told Jordan was better than all that. You so, but watch him. The best are you to ever him. be born. Watch him. Watch him play. And, 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 and for Pogba as, as a midfielder has also faced the same problem. Because of his stature, people have wrongly profiled him. Mm -hmm. They think he should be bullying people in midfield. He should be doing the hard job. That is not him. Yeah. If you really see Jordan for what he is, I think yeah. he appreciates an aspect of his game. But the more frustrating thing is, sometimes when Jordan plays, it doesn't look like he's interested. And at the days that when he plays, he feels like he's giving 110%. He's a beautiful player to work because he works very hard for the team. And we've seen that of him in Crystal Palace. There are many games where he's fighting for the balls, he's winning balls. He's not scoring, he's not assisting, but he gives it. But the other times where he plays, he just feels this player doesn't look like he wants to be here. Yeah. And that, these are some of the things that doesn't go in the favor of Jordan. But I think, like Danny says, if coaches sometimes come out to explain the roles they've given to play, and Patty himself did say mm -hmm. that everybody's going to play about what I'm doing, but, I'm doing, but, I'm doing but it's an instruction. Yeah. Yeah. And the managers were happy. But in, and when Danny spoke about Grealish, Pep Guardiola wants him to hold on to the ball when they're on the counter because he wants others to move up and get close to him yeah. so that the passing is short. Because if a ringer gets there and crosses for Haaland, and Haaland misses it, there's a big gap between that defense and City's midfield. They can't shoot away. So he needs the players to close up. They have very so tiny very things. Tactical. They have very tiny things that you will never know when okay. you're not close to the team. Brilliant. I'm just. I'm not saying Danny is right about Jordan should oh, play Danny's every right. day. Danny is yeah. right. But I appreciate where he's coming Jordan from. Will Jordan should be scoring. <laughs> oh, Jordan will play. He should be scoring. <laughs> Thursday is coming. You see, Jordan will play. He, the, is can't he, pass anywhere. The, Jordan will play. <laughs> there's nobody better than Jordan will play on Thursday. We're the here. When Baba comes back, Baba will play. The biggest flaw in Daniel's defense of Jordan is that it's actually in recent matches that Jordan is being deployed as a winger. No. For the majority of the time when no. Asamojan retired, Jordan was our least striker. No. This is true. No. And, and, and within that no, period, he was. No, he was. 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 He the, 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 the energy. <laughs> the energy. Thank you, Karim. The energy player. <laughs> <laughs> the energetic player. Okay, so Tottenham Hurst pair, they drew 3 3 with Saram thing over the weekend. And um, what the, the guys were alluding to was the fact that Kamal Din Suleiman came off the bench and caused massive havoc. They were 3 1 down and he came off the bench. Created a lot of problems for Spurs. The match ended 3-3. Okay. Um, we're trying to show you the highlights. But what stood out after the game was the post-match press conference from Antonio Conte. And he spoke about Tottenham Hotspur in the third person. As if he wasn't part of them. But let me tell you what he said. Just listen. An alibi. Another. Another alibi. You try to find alibi and an excuse for, for, for the players. Okay, continue, continue to do this, to find excuse for the players. You do only this, you do only this. Excuse for the players. Yeah, but the players, maybe my, my future, and then okay, they, they, lost, they lost confidence, they lost spirit, they lost to, to be a team. 
excuse, excuse, excuse. Try to protect. Try to protect every time and uh, this situation. Bah. Come on, come on, come on. We are professional. We, we, we paid, the club paid us a lot of money. The players receive money. Me, receive money. You understand? Not to be, to find excuse and uh, don't have spirit or, or, or don't show the sense of belongings. I don't show uh, sense of responsibility because we are showing this. And uh, for me, this is unacceptable for me because this is the first time in my career to see a situation like this. And until now, I wasn't able to change, not to change, but compare last season, the situation went to become worst. Wow. Antonio Conte says the Tottenham Hotspur culture, the club, the players, he said they've changed coaches, they've not won anything in the last 20 years, and he, he can't do it anymore. He, he doesn't understand it. He's like, he's, he said he's never been in this kind of situation before with these sorts of players. And that was after they drew 3-3, because they gave away a two-goal lead, they draw 3-3, and he lost it. He said they never win something. He doesn't even include himself. He's like, he's not part of, of the Of course special. he always wins. He can't include himself. He always wins everywhere he goes. Antonio Conte, apart from when he took out his early days from Atalanta, Siena, and when he was sacked at Atalanta, I think he didn't get enough time to do what he wanted to do. But wherever he's been, Antonio Conte, that has been him. And listen, it is so easy to look at Conte and say that he's shifting blame. But every single thing he said, questionable about the timing, but every single thing he said there about Spurs is true. Mm. You, you cannot look at the profile of coaches Spurs have had, from uh, uh, Andres Villas Boas to Borussia Pochettino to Jose Mourinho to Antonio Conte, and the club hasn't won anything. And this Spurs team is not very different from the Mauricio Pochettino team because the core players in Poch's team, Poch, was begging for a rehaul because he thought after going to the Champions League final, that team had hit the peak. Daniel Levy and the rest of the Spurs board thought if they're able to reach the Champions League final, they are good enough to go on. They missed out on that period. A year after, they went to Dubai, Carlos Vinicius. Mm -hmm. They went yeah. to buy Tangai in Dombeli. Mm -hmm. They went to buy a couple of players, all of whom have left. So when Antonio Conte is absolutely furious with the situation around Spurs, Conte rejected Spurs before Spurs went for the next Spirito Santos. Yes. Mm -hmm. And at the time, Antonio Conte thought Harry Kane wasn't going to stay at Spurs. City were looking for Harry Kane. The yeah. deal didn't happen. The next Spirito Santos came. Kane didn't necessarily start the season with Spurs. Then when you know was sacked and Harry Kane was there, come to the place, the very first part that he fixed is the back. How solid Antonio is. He is good. Rodrigo Bentaco, who wasn't playing for, he's turned him into a good player. Yeah. He's actually improved Dyer to the extent that Dyer now could go to three Lions. Mm -hmm. Clement Longley, which team wants to win anything without <laughs> brought in Clement Longley? Which team wants to win anything was to have Eric Dyer as their goalkeeper. Which team would have Emerson Royale as a first choice for Man City in the Premier League, being the Liverpool, being the Juventus? And or even the Chelsea. They didn't match his ambitions. That Does remains. he stay or he think he's I, gone? I think Antonio Conte is gone. Wow. I absolutely think he's gone because the two reasons players have got for the international break, they need to just let him go. All right. It's you know what? Um, let's just wrap up with La Liga. The El Clasico was on the weekend. There was one moment that was very controversial. Barca won the game 2-1, of course. Um, but Real Madrid scored a goal when it was 1-1 to go 2-1 up, but that goal was ruled out for offside. Daniel, I, I, I don't know, you've had a chance to see it. Offside or tough decision? Oh, they have the football. We saw it in the Arsenal game. Um, Arsenal and, and, and Brentford. We've yeah. seen a couple of this. And this one in an El Clasico, come on, you, you really can't be making a mistake like this. It it, it's, it's a game of margins because at the point when Asensio scored, Madrid were five. Now La Liga is over. It is. It was over before this game. I don't see how FC Barcelona don't go on and just yeah. nick this. And Madrid now might shift their attention to the Copa de Rey. Oh, the Champions League. Right. The Champions League. Yeah. Uh, the Champions League as well. All right. Against Thank Chelsea. You. Thank you very much, Sicho. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. This was as enjoyable as always. Thank you so much, all of you as well, for tuning in Friends. from wherever you did. Madrid is shifting their attention to the Champions League. And so what? After Potter and drew what? against Everton. <laughs> <laughs> and so what? And so what? And so what? We don't care. We don't care. Anyway, thank you so much. Hunters is our sponsor here on the show. Thank you so much to everybody at Casa Preco for choosing us. My name is Fento Tahiru Fento, show produced by Benaya Dafia Makpo. Until next time, take care and bye-bye.